mess with trust. That's such a mouthful. I will simply refer to it as the trust. Um, it's motivated by the righteous generated by Wall Street Bank's sabotage of the U.S. economy. And the philosophical value premise is straightforward. Washington taxes should be invested here at home to benefit directly Washington citizens. That's the value proposition. Here's what the infrastructure trust will do. It will invest in public infrastructure as a short-term revolving construction lender. I'm going to repeat that bit of banking jargon again. It will invest in public infrastructure as a short-term revolving construction lender. Let me translate that jargon into plain English. Two-step financing is a standard practice in the private sector project financing, whether it's a home or a 40-story office building. The construction loan pays for the project itself. And then there is a second loan, a long-term, sometimes called takeout loan or permanent mortgage loan that pays off the construction loan. Two steps. And this two-step financing process can also be used in public infrastructure projects. The following three points summarize the benefits of creating a trust as this short-term revolving construction lender. The first benefit. State and local government borrowing costs can be significantly lower compared to bond financing for infrastructure construction. For example, half a million dollars, slightly more than half a million dollars in interest savings can be achieved on a $50 million project built over 24 months. Half a million dollars saved on interest if you're borrowing from the trust and not at market bond rates. Second benefit, as the loans are repaid and as they revolve, as they are repaid and then turn over, their turnover will leverage the number of infrastructure projects that can be built and the number of jobs that can be created compared to financing with long-term bonds. Another example, $1 billion loan for, say, sewer and water infrastructure projects would generate about 13,000 jobs over 24 months, and as those are repaid over the first 24 months, they're relaunched again. So you can have another one billion dollars uh, worth of projects, so that would produce 26,000 jobs over a 48-month period. Third benefit: state and local taxpayers will get a better return on their invested tax dollars by investing in infrastructure construction instead of very low yielding bank certificates of deposits, or U.S. Treasury securities. So that an example. The Treasurer has just invested our tax dollars, and there's some of our tax dollars, in six-month bank certificates of deposit, paying 0.45%. This isn't a criticism of, of Jim. It's just where the market is right now. If today you were investing in six-month Treasury bills, the return would be 0.13%. That's where the market is. The trust can almost double that rate to taxpayers if a portion of those funds were invested in infrastructure. Now I want to drill down on those three benefits and give you some examples. The first benefit, the substantial reduction in borrowing costs for state and local infrastructure compared to bond financing. The state and local governments can borrow from the trust at lower interest rates and much reduced upfront fees by borrowing than by borrowing from the bond market or from commercial banks. Let's have an example to illustrate this. Imagine a city, say Yakima, is ready to construct a $50 million infrastructure project, water and sewer treatment plan, that will take 24 months to build. If it finances this through the bond market, it will have substantial upfront fees for bond counsel, investment advisors, underwriting costs. And those fees are in addition, in addition to the interest payments on bonds. Now, introduce a construction loan from the infrastructure trust with a low underwriting fee to cover only the cost for processing the loan and building reserves. You could lend that money out at 1% below what the bond rate would be. The interest savings alone, just on that 1% 
rate reduction would be about $500,000, half a million dollars during the 24 months uh, required to construct the project. Friends, that ain't a chunk change when you talk about that kind of savings. The local government would then repay the trust loan from various sources appropriate for the type of project, the long-term permanent mortgage takeout loan uh, from a variety of sources. Now, the second benefit is the turnover of trust loans leverages the number of projects that can be built and the number of jobs that can be created compared to financing with long-term bonds. Construction loans by their very nature for a short period of time. Every time a construction loan is repaid, it provides funds that can then revolve and be used for other projects. This is in contrast to financing construction with long-term bonds. And typically these bonds are long-term because they cover the initial construction and then you have to pay those bonds back over 20, 25, 30 years. They don't revolve. So if the trust construction portfolio were capitalized at, say, a billion dollars, it turns over an average every 24 months, it could finance $2 billion in infrastructure construction every 48 months because of the revolving nature of it. Consider the implications for job creation. The State's Economic and Revenue Forecast Council estimates that sewer and water infrastructure projects create 13 direct and indirect jobs for every $1 million of investment. So if you translate that into a billion dollars, a construction portfolio would create 13,000 jobs when you lend that $1 billion out. Every 24 months, and if it revolves, for the next 24 months, you're going to create 26,000 jobs over 48 months. That's just simple arithmetic with it. Now, the third benefit, the state and local taxpayers will get a better return on their invested tax dollars by investing in infrastructure construction instead of banks, CDs, or U.S. Treasury securities. As I indicated earlier, that Jim's office invested a portion of our tax dollars in bank CDs for the next six months. This was in July when they did this with an interest rate of 0.45%. The normal criticism of the treasurer is just where the market is. Uh, and if today they invested uh, dollars in U.S. Treasury securities for six months, uh, I looked it up in the internet before it came down, it's 0.13% uh, is the return. Um, that's just where the market is. But here's the fundamental fiscal question. Will investing tax dollars in construction infrastructure provide a higher return than bank CDs or low-yielding U.S. Treasury securities? And the answer is a resounding yes. And here's the math. Uh, if you lend out today at 1% below bond rates, say you're lending out in the Yakima project at 2.2% interest to the city of Yakima, you subtract 1% for the underwriting cost and building the reserves for the, uh, for the trust, You've got a return to taxpayers of 1.2%. Compare that with 0.45% in CDs or 0.13% in Treasury securities. Now, Jim has raised it, some important issues around liquidity and so on, and I'm certainly prepared to talk about that uh, in the Q&A. So just to sum it up, the benefits for the trust are that tax dollars will be invested directly in this state for needed infrastructure, will create urgently needed jobs, they'll create uh, higher financial returns to the taxpayers, to local and state governments.